Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Las Vegas Regional checking in with 4421. Forge Robotics had a great performance just a few weeks ago at, as regional finalists as well, too. So congratulations on that. But looking for big things here uh, in Las Vegas as well, too. Really like Forge Robot this year. Overall packaging is very sleek and smooth. We've got a lot of things to go through, including this new Rev uh, linear actuator we'll be diving more into and how that works. Uh, but some great things with their intake and their shooter and going into some different uh, software programming functions that this team has implemented and is working so well. So let's learn more about Forge coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions. Support Fun's content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and Fun members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Max, let's start off on this robot talking about this Rev linear actuator that you have on this. Uh, this is something I'd love to see actually uh, function and, and use because I haven't seen it on a robot so far. And then we're going to be diving into your intake and kind of following that note journey through. So talk, talk to me more about it. Yeah, so for the Rev, Rev linear actuators here, this is the first year that they've been in first. And essentially how we're using them is basically as a pneumatic, right? So we're powering this to bring our entire sort of shooter mechanism up as a rotation and essentially that decreases a bunch of things like we don't have to use gears we don't have to use pneumatics and like this works perfectly well as well like it's fast it's quick and it does its job well um, like actually we have a demonstration this is just one of our spare linear actuators here um, so essentially how this works is that it's driven by a lead screw down like a lead screw all the way through and essentially as the hex here turns it comes out or it goes back in so like, as this comes out, the shooter rotates up and as it comes down, it rotates back down. Yeah, um, that's how we're using the Rev Linear Actuators this year. They've been amazing throughout both competitions. We haven't had many faults with them. We haven't had like lead screws breaking on us or anything. Um, yeah, they're great. And essentially the next part, I guess, would be talking about the intake here. So we've gone with a under the bumper intake this year. And essentially what you can see here um, is two carbon fiber tubes up here and two carbon fiber tubes down here. Essentially, um, these two catch the note at first as it comes under the bumper. We'll demonstrate that actually now. So that comes straight up and that's basically a touch and go intake. So uh, we make sure between every match to clean these carbon fiber tubes down because we found that as like matches go on they really wear out from the note but um, once they're all cleaned it's like as you just saw it's touch and go. Um, a cool thing we have with this intake as well is the implementation of these sort of cow catchers here and these are essentially um, 3D printed triangles with Teflon tape on them and that makes them super slippery which allows us to catch the note kind of perfectly in the center. And as the note comes through the intake as well, we have smaller versions, which are here. We call these calf catchers, and they just help to bring the note more directly into the intake, yeah. I can appreciate the uh, naming theme uh, for that as well, too. Uh, one thing I want to ask you real quick, when you were looking at uh, analyzing the game, I want to talk about these Rebel Linear Actuaries a little bit. Um, was this something that, when you're looking at, hey, like we don't want to use pneumatics or something, was this the first thing that you came up with, or did you have other uh, processes you were thinking of first? What, what led you to uh, wind up with this? So obviously there's more like traditional things that have been used in the past, like gearing, things like that. And we really didn't want to use gears too much this sure. year because we know they wear a lot throughout the competition. And then we found out that Rev was producing these amazing actuators and we just decided to try them on one of our dev development bots at first. And they were perfect on that development bot. So we just implemented it straight onto the dev competition. No, that's bot. great. And doing dev bots too, really, is really what gives you that great advantage of testing things out and seeing what it's like. Yeah, that's yeah. really cool. So let's pass it on to uh, Patrick, who's going to be talking about your uh, shooter and going into uh, your uh, LED, some note detection. One of the things, too, uh, I'd love to see if there's anything we can demo with that, especially if we can see that Rev Linear Actuator deploy as well, too, would be great. Sure. sure thing. So basically, what we did for this year is that we put everything that our robot does within this one, like, giant system. So we had our intake there, which was just demonstrated, and then that moves on to this set of three different rollers, and that helps move our game piece up into these shooters. And so... 
other thing this does, this top roller here, so this is quite spaced out from the others, this also does our amp mechanism. And so we can get a demo of that since the note is already in there. Um, so what will happen is this will flip up and that'll bring a note out. So if we see it here. So that's our starting position where we can get our drivers to line up with the opening on the amp. And then they can press another button which will bring it fully. And then you'll see this brings that up for these rollers to push out. And so we can see that. And yeah, so that's the amp scoring. And so these are both an indexer roller and an amp scoring mechanism. Um, so for We'll move on to the shooter wheels. So these are run on two separate Neos Vortexes. Uh, one of them goes at 5,500 RPMs and the other goes at 4,500. And that just creates a little bit of spin on the note so it flies more stably than if there were no spin. While at the same time, it doesn't create like, sometimes when we're doing testing, when we ran that at very separate speeds or only on one set of rollers, we noticed that the note would like deviate right or left. Sure. And so this just avoids that problem while still giving us a stable flight path. Um, one final thing to note for this is that we have note detection. So we have these two sets of LED strips. And so currently there is no note in here. And so they're red, which means that there's nothing in there. But we'll notice here we have two sensors that are on this mechanism. So there's one within the tube there and one here. And then so when we intake a note, and the sensors detect the notes, then the LEDs turn green and they're very bright and very visible. So then our drivers know, oh, we have a note in our bot and then they can drive back and score Amber Speaker. From your shooter wise, uh, where where do you like to shoot from in the field typically? Break that down for me. Um, So generally we've been working throughout the season to basically be able to shoot anywhere on the field. And so um, we can shoot from like the wing. We can also do like a lob shot. And so that's essentially not to score, but just to get a note transported into our wing. Sure. And so either other Alliance members can pick it up so they don't have to do a full cycle or we can cycle back and get fast shots in when the speaker is amplified. Yeah, we're definitely so we seeing the meta evolve a lot that way, right? Yeah. see more and more teams do this. That's something you think you might be implementing here at Las Vegas? Yeah, so it's definitely something we've been experimenting with. We're going to be running it throughout practice matches and through quals as well, just so we can get fast faster cycles and more scores. Yeah, well, let's talk about your manufacturing process. When we were talking earlier, you've done a lot of stuff in-house for it. Let's talk about uh, some of your CNC work. This is a gorgeous robot overall. Yeah, <clears throat> so yeah. So when we uh, first got the game, one of our first uh, thought, thought process that we went through was really figuring out the geometry within the game and seeing what's possible and what's not. So we, uh, we had lots of uh, talks about climbing, trap, whether any of these are actually things that we want to go for. And uh, eventually we came to the decision that we should uh, climb, not go for trap though. Uh, so one thing that I, I really want to show off it right here, uh, Patrick, if you can take this for me. Uh, so this is our final uh, mock-up of our side plates. Uh, originally we just had just our intake cut out, uh, but now we included everything on the sides of the robot to be included onto this. And what that uh, allows us to do is our actual like uh, building everything and making everything come together would be a lot easier. Uh, another thing that we like to do here, um, you can put that away now. Um, another thing that we that we have here is we have lots of inserts inside here, and what that does is basically alleviate any uh, strain on these max tubes that they don't collapse on themselves. So like ma making sure that we like help support our thing, as well as we uh, fully catted uh, all the designs for these gussets right here, as well as on top of our. Um, of our frame right here. And what that does also add more uh, structure structure and support. Uh, as well as once we started uh, like, once once we started prototyping a lot of these things, uh, we started noticing there are some of like points of failures and some places that we could actually improve on. So as Max was talking about, these, uh, these cow catchers right here and these uh, calf catchers right here, these are both things that we started designing for because once we were actually analyzing uh, actual footage of our intake and our shooting, we noticed that the note wasn't really going in a path that would be um, like reasonable. Uh, like for example, once we were actually um, t uh, in taking a note, we noticed that it was ran uh, run running into uh, the max tube right here, which you know we don't really want that to happen. So yeah, lots of um, lots of planning coming from the cat the cat team and just making sure that this robot can perform uh, to the best they can. And it's been doing pretty darn good so far. I know in Las Vegas here, trying to qualify for the World Championships and uh, looking forward to that great performance. So let's wrap up. Talk to Mateo more about uh, your software side of things. Uh, what are you implementing? And then should you qualify for World Championships, any changes you might be looking to make getting into Worlds as well? So 
in terms of the what we're doing right now, so the main thing is our automated shooting, which takes the positioning of the robot in terms of its like uh, odometry and with the limelight and that updates it. We take that positioning and then we take the positioning of where we want the note to end up, and then we do um, projectile motion from our position to that position to then solve out for time and then solve out for what angle it should be shooting at. The advantage of this is you don't actually need to see the apple tags on the shooter, like on the um, uh, speaker. You can just see any apple tag on the field and if you know where you are, you'll just shoot right at that point, regardless of if you can see that target. And then the other things is the path planner we've been implementing for auto. All right, so our path planner, we have the ability to draft our autos and then they follow the path really precisely because we've tuned our drivetrain so that it can follow our paths and then keep going on that movement and then it stays updated throughout the match. And then we've noticed that you need, if we update it, it's, we get really good performance because we're following our actual paths that we've been drafting, which is one thing I'm very glad about. Um, another thing is that um, this, this mechanism here, which is mounted directly onto the shooter and these linear actuators, which are connected to a encoder down here, which is directly from this pivot. Because if you notice that this axle here, which is what it all moves on, is actually powered. So you can't put an encoder on here because it's spinning. So what we did is we mounted it directly to this as a gear, and that gear spins, this other gear spins our encoder. So we know our exact position of our pivot, sure. which allows us to shoot faster during auto, because we're right there on in it, and we just shoot. And then that has been really helpful in producing pretty good accuracy during autonomous. Otherwise, how consistent are you in or how many notes in general? Um, we've been very consistent so far in this competition and it really helps that we don't shoot based on positioning. So our, even if our autonomous like hits a wall during dinner or last practice match, sure. we can still adjust and then make that shot. Um, so our autonomous has been very accurate so far in this competition. And then in terms of notes, we are able to get five notes from the center um, and then we can get three notes from like the source side in like mostly from center line and it's a longer distance but it has been working very precisely this and lastly um, ask uh should you do qualify at the las vegas regional what is maybe the first thing you want to tackle in regards to getting ready for worlds so at the build space we have this second live light right here which is designated for robot detection so we built a neural network pipeline that can do robot detection that will be mounted right here so when you're going for those notes of the center line we found a way to swap paths so if there's a robot coming towards the note you're going towards, you can swap it and go towards another note. That's what I would like to see done before. Well, Forge Worlds. Robotics, first off, good luck here at the Las Vegas Regional. We Thank do you. hope you qualify in. Some tough competition, but we know your team's going to be performing very well. So can't wait to see how you do here. Thanks for all telling us about this robot. A lot of great things that teams can learn from it. So thank you for telling us more about it, and good luck the rest of the way. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your robotics competition needs. Celebrating 20 years of quality robotics parts and superior service, Animark employees have over 200 years of first-team experience. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Animark.com for high-quality and affordable solutions.